Hi everyone, it's me, it's Issa, as told by a widow. Yes, I am back. How was everyone's um, Easter? If you pack, uh, if you celebrate Easter, I'm pretty sure it was wonderful. Enjoying this spring weather, where I am is it's it's typical. Um, the natives, <clears throat> um, where I'm from, where I live now, call this pneumonia weather because you just don't know what you're going to get, but you still have to dress consistently, um, you know, for the season because it can be 80 degrees today, two days later, it's down to 30. And then, of course, after that happened, you have, like, these major thunderstorms. But outside of that, and because I'm used to it, life is super wonderful. Um, I want to say, I want to make it short. But you and you all know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> But um, this particular video, this episode, is about grief. And it's individual um, and more specific terms, but also to address grief in a more general and broad sense. Now, remember, my videos are always about my experiences, okay? And it, ca it came to me again that a lot of times when you're in grief support groups and especially those that are in religious facilities or offer it as a discount or absolutely free and I absolutely love those and um and may God universe continue to bless them to continue those services and to expand them so if you ever do that and you're able to donate, donate to those organizations, to the speakers, and to the um, professional that's presiding over those meetings, okay? So the motivation behind this, knowing that a lot of these facilities, <clears throat> these meetings, uh, grief support meetings um, are in, like I said, religious sites or uh, recreational centers. <clears throat> uh, I've even seen, um, I guess you would call it like a, it was a store and he just donate. He offer a, a area um, of the store uh, for uh, a grief support group, you know, to uh, take place, and that was wonderful. Okay, because he opened up the door to his community to come in and not just partake of groceries. But to also let them know that you don't have to go far to get an access to a healthy form of um, healing. Okay. Now, I stay away from medical and legal terms because remember... I'm not a professional. So 
you wouldn't you hear me say things like, you know, just legalistic medical terms. Do you understand me? If they are, it's something that I myself was diagnosed with. Understand me. And also remember that my channel is not a substitute for professional or trained guidance. Okay. My videos are to help in addition to healthy healing. Okay. Not to take the place of, but to encourage you and to inspire you to keep going. That it's going to get better. Yes, it doesn't feel comfortable now, wherever you are, and it's not feeling comfortable. I want you to know that I identify with those through many videos that I share. And I share with you my failures and my um, wins and those that said between I haven't quite put a put a, a a label on it, you know. That in the middle, you know. So with all of that being said, and um, so let's go back to these amazing organ uh locations and organizations that open up their spaces for people in the community to come for free or just for a, you know, at will donation, whatever you want to call it. But they open up their space and they intentionally invite, seek out someone who's trained to some level or a bona fide professional in um, some form of grief support or some form of mental healing, emotional healing, okay? Even spiritual healing or all three, okay? And see, in those rooms where we're talking about grief, it brings in a lot of different forms of grief. See, I know my channel is banner as told by a widow because that's just my unique specialty because that's where I'm coming from. But I've experienced on this grief journey as a widow many groups where I'm in a room with people who are grieving the, you know, the death of a spouse, the death of a child, or a parent, or grandparent, or a friend, of an unborn child. I've even been in the room with somebody who is grieving the loss of a marriage. You know, divorce. I've been in a room with people who are grieving the loss of, I think she, it was her dream job. You know. So, I want you to know that in general terms, you those are still bona fide, true griefs. And they should be acknowledged and identified and allowed in the room. Do you understand? And once again, I give major... Um, kudos. Kudos is not even enough. Just 
the amazing human beings who open up their heart to manage these sessions with so many different layers of grief. And they do a dynamic job. And the reason that I'm bringing this up, because a lot of times, uh, depending on where you are in your grief journey, you all know it, and that's anger. Mm -hmm. You mad as hell. And you come to these meetings with the best of intentions. You're looking for healing. But also, you know you're looking for an emotional out. Right? Let me say this. Group meetings like this is not, you don't, this is, is, I'm not telling you not to go, but it's not the place for you to display your anger. Okay. Wherever and however you're grieving, a loss of a job, a spouse, a marriage, uh, a, a pet finances because I've even encountered now that I can recall um, someone was in uh, uh, one of the meetings and she was just grieving her old way of life because her family had to make a great financial adjustment. You know, not upward, but what she felt was downward. A setback, okay? Do, did she belong in that room? Yes, she did. Because the one thing that we all share in grief, And this is just my opinion, my humble opinion. What I have assessed for myself is heartache. Plain and simple. Heartache, your heart is broken. Your heart broken because your spouse has passed on, transition has died. Your heart broken because your marriage is, didn't go the length that you wanted to. I mean, it hurts when you feel like somebody just don't love you anymore. Your heart breaks when you want to go into this place of work, where you work so hard to be to go to or um, to be qualified for. Your heart aches. When you work so hard to reach a financial level of stability and you feel like you've been set back two times by whatever condition or situation, it's heartache. That's what we all share in that grief. So when we have these meetings and you're in the room and you hear people talk about or introduce themselves and why they are here. Now, maybe this, what I'm saying is some form of grief etiquette. I don't know. But I do want to say this. Nobody in that room, all the examples I just gave you, from divorce to a spouse dying to the death of anyone you love, the, the a financial setback, a dream job, a career. It is not the place 
for you to set value on somebody else's grief. Don't do that. It's not a place for you to compare either. For example, I had someone very early in my grief journey come to me and wanted to compare. Um, I think it was like the same day during the re my husband repass. And and she meant well enough. She was um, a family member. And she was like, I know what you're going through because such and such an hour going through a divorce. Don't don't get into comparing. Don't do that. Because my response was, I know divorce is is is, is painful. And it can have a wide range of, you know, emotional, physical, and financial, uh, you know, um, consequences, circumstances. And I told her something along the lines where, but you still have something I don't have. You have the opportunity to reconcile. I won't ever have the opportunity to reconcile with my husband. I would literally, I literally have to meet him on the other side. So don't compare. You follow me? And you definitely don't come in there and, and tell people. Because I've had this happen too. Where someone said, well, at least you get a casserole dish and people feel sorry for you when your spouse died. Nobody came to me. Everybody looked at me like I failed as a wife. No, no, no. Unacceptable, okay? Don't do that. That you're setting value, okay? On somebody else's grief against your own. You follow me? So, when you're in these groups, group, especially uh, group grief support groups, be there in the spirit of I'm here because I know everybody here heart is healing. That we all share one common factor. If not, even though our grief, whatever the modality may be, may be different. But we are feeling some form of heartache. Not some form. We're feeling heartache. Our heart is broken. And we're upset. And we're angry. So meet each other where you share the same thing in grief and that's heartache and you want healing and direction with the healing in your heart bringing it back together piecing together those fragments you want healthy healing okay now I also understand that on your grief journey, there are more specific ones. Remember I told you in a general sense, we just spoke about that. So now I want to talk about 
Greek support in more specific terms. Yes, it's okay to have to go to a Greek support that is more uh, focused on that of a widow or widower. Or the people that are grieving the loss of a child, for instance. So don't feel indifferent if you choose a more grief support that supports the unique dynamics of your grief journey. I.e., or for example, the loss of a spouse, divorce, um, the loss of a child, the loss of a, even a husband, the loss due to certain conditions, the loss of uh, a child with certain uh, illnesses, or the loss of a spouse from, let's say, cancer, or the loss of a loved one due to violence, or the loss of a loved one due to suicide or something like that. Those are perfectly fine. They're absolutely great. And if you find them, go to them because a lot of the times you need something more tailored to your heart space. Okay. But until then, if you're not able to get to those unique and more specific um, support groups, which you can find, and because I list a lot with, you know, um, I'm going to see if I can find that video where you can put in your zip code. Great organizations where you can put in your zip code here in the U.S. And they can find um, specific uh, support groups where they are more specific to your form of grief. Okay? So there's nothing wrong with that. But I also want you to also know, don't put off going to grief support because you can't find one tailored to your specific situation. But you find one local at a church that has opened its doors for grief support. Or you hear two to three different people say they're here because uh, we had to sell our home. And now we're in an apartment. And I was so hurt that I can't even put seeing to see beyond my, my hand. I'm agitated. I feel fragmented. I'm used to living of a six-figure income. Right? Don't just shut down and leave. No. And if you, the next person may be grieving the loss of their pet, their beloved pet. You hear me? Somebody may be grieving, like I said, the loss uh, of a spouse through death. And let's say you're there because you're grieving the loss of a marriage that comes with divorce. Don't get up and leave. Do you understand me? Because the one thing that all of them and yourself share is grief. You're heartbroken. And you're looking for healing. So you, until you're able to find something that is tailor-made, unique to your situation, please get to these group grief support groups and start your healthy healing. All right. Just remember, no comparing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You do not compare your journey. Okay. I was always told you never tell somebody or Compare somebody's, you know, state of hell. 
you know. Because what Susan see may not be what Sally see, but this Sally and Susan both feel grief. They're heartbroken. So start there and start healing there. Do you hear me? No comparing. And definitely do not get in there and be like, oh my goodness. There is nothing to feel sorry about. That is not grief. Grief is when you or help build a marriage have this man's children or this woman's children and then it's just nothing you can do to make them love you. You're willing to change any and everything but they just don't love you anymore. Don't do that. Okay? Because your heart ain't And about your situation, it's the same heartache as that person who lost a job because they put in the work. Because they're going to come back and say, no, I worked my butt off. I worked a full time. These are just examples. I worked my butt off. I was a non-traditional student. I didn't have any scholarship, but I knew what I wanted. So I worked two jobs full time to pay my way through junior college and work my way through senior college to get my master's and all my certifications. Interviewed. Did free internships to gain my ideal position. And I was in that position, performing at my top and most passionate level. Going in, not because I can guarantee any type of outcome, but I can guarantee them that they were going to get my best and that I was going to get the job done. And then one day they come in. And tell me, your job, your position has been deleted. It's no longer available. But we'll pay you for the next eight weeks. And just maybe you'll be eligible for unemployment. So just try it and see what they say. Okay? They're heartbroken. And they're angry just like you. So I that so that's it. Um so I don't even know what to call this. Maybe uh support group etiquette. I don't know. But what I will say, don't put off not going or getting these into the grief support groups or leaving because you feel like nobody gets you because they haven't walked the walk you walk. I understand that too. But until you find a one a grief support group that is unique to your situation, going there knowing that if they're there, they're heartbroken. They're angry. They're fragmented and they're looking for a healthy way of healing just like you are. So if you go in there with that understanding and that form and some compassion, everybody in there will leave. More settled spiritually, emotionally. was a, a sense of shared identity. I 
Although I know you're like, hey, that's not something I want to share. Like, yeah. But when you in when you're in heartache, you and I both know we need to talk to somebody who's feeling what I'm feeling and so that we can get through this together. All right. So go in there with you know, knowing that you're gonna have some sense of shared identity. Compassion. You understand me? So don't put it off. And that's it. Just that simple. Not sure what to call this one, but uh, yeah. We're all just looking for healing on this grief journey. You know, we want our hearts put back together. But remember, our hearts are so wonderfully made and so uniquely made. It's like crystal when it breaks. You can't really put it back together again. It can never go back to what it was. But you can put it back together. I forgot what it's a unique process that if you have a really nice crystal, right? And then you can take the pieces and put them together. And it has more value than <laughs> when you brought the crystal home. I am working, I can't remember that process, but that also lets you know. Remember, you don't go through this journey unchanged. All right? So even when you feel like your heart is shattered, just know that it can be put back together even more beautiful. And it come out, yes, changed, but it comes out even better, more valuable. All right? So remember, Go into these groups, get there for healthy healing, and practice compassion for yourself and for others. That's it. All right. Love you guys. I will see you. Talk to you in the next video. Huh. <sighs>